So where are we today with breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma? So ALCL is a rare cancer of the immune system associated with breast implants. It is not breast cancer. It doesn't develop in the breast. It develops in the fluid and the scar tissue around a breast implant. It is associated with textured or rough surface implants. I've been involved in collaborative research which has been instrumental in guiding the Therapeutic Goods Administration and regulators throughout the world in terms of assessing the individual risk associated with various types of textured breast implants. This has led to the withdrawal from the Australian market of almost all of the textured breast implants and the only one still on the market is one with a, a low level texture and it has a very low level risk of about one in 30,000. So that's one in 30,000. The normal Australian woman's risk of breast cancer is one in eight. So these are vastly different levels of risk, but of course, an implant going in is a risk that is introduced, not one you're born with. So this certainly helps patients going forward that these more risky implants are no longer available. And one of the questions we hear is, well, why were textured implants used in the first place? So implants are round or they're shaped. And shaped implants are used, especially for women with breast cancer, for people who have very low body weight and very low breast volume and they want a natural breast shape rather than a, a round breast shape. For people with breast asymmetry, breast um, uh, developmental deformities have commonly had shaped implants. Now all shaped implants have rough surfaces so that they don't twist. Textured surfaces have been associated with a lower level of capsular contracture which is the highest reason for um, uh, revising breast implants and also for implant movement out of position to stabilise the implant position which is the second commonest reason for reoperation. So uh, historically, textured breast implants have been associated with a lower level of risk for reoperation. As we understand more about breast surgery, as the techniques have evolved, as we understand the reasons people get capsular contracture, and as we do other things to support implant stability, the difference in performance being between round, smooth implants and a textured implant have narrowed. Consequently, in Australia, most implants going in are now smooth rather than textured. But certainly before we knew about ALCL and its association with textured implants, in Australia, probably eight out of 10 implants were textured. So certainly some of my own patients will have implants that are now no longer on the market. The important thing is to distinguish a, um, an unavailability of the implant from a recall. While these implants are no longer available because the government is concerned, the TGA and its expert working group are concerned about the risk that this poses for women having implants, the risk is still very low. It is still a rare problem. It's not a recall like we had with airbags where you had to go in and get them replaced because they were dangerous and they might kill you in an accident. These implants, they don't want to have them on sale anymore, but the risk is very low but the risk of removing thousands of implants to prevent a single case is greater than the risk of the disease itself. So that's important. The other thing about breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma or ALCL is that when it develops, it develops in a very visual way for most patients. Fluid collects around the implant, usually on one side. So over a period, a relatively short period of time, of weeks perhaps, one breast increases in size and maybe a couple more larger in size than the unaffected breast. So it's visible. This makes people inquire as to what's happening and seek help. And at this early stage, there is still not complete certainty that this represents cancer at this early stage. And at this early stage, removing the implant with the capsule around it is complete treatment. There's no chemotherapy, no radiotherapy, and no recurrence. So that's the other reason why the TGA has said there's not a reason necessarily to have 
routine removal of all of these implants because it has a very good prognosis at this early stage, which is where most women in Australia present. Less commonly, it can present with a lump beside the breast, and these are things you need to therefore be aware of. In my own practice, I have used lots of textured implants. At this point, we have always used what's called the 14 point plan, which helps eliminate bacteria because bacteria appear to be part of the process that leads to this disease in people who might be um, susceptible because of their own genetic makeup. So we haven't had any patients in our own clinic yet that have had this disease and touch wood, that stays the same. But if you have any questions, the first thing to do is visit our website. It's got links to the TGA information about ALCL. So this is government information. It's unbiased. It's not, it's not sponsored by industry or surgeons or user groups or anything. It is unbiased scientific information that's interpreted for you. We have information on our own website. And as a patient of ours, of course, you can phone and uh, talk to the clinic. So what does this mean for you going forward? Uh, the most important thing is that no implant lasts forever. The reason for reoperation is uh, almost always something other than ALCL. The commonest three reasons for reoperation are hardening around an implant, which you will feel, movement out of position, which you will see, and rupture of an implant, which may be silent. Rupture is uncommon before 10 years, but becomes increasingly common coming up to 10 years and certainly more common beyond. So after about four or five years, an ultrasound every year or two will help us look at the implant integrity. And because ALCL develops as fluid around an implant, it'll also be able to assess the presence or absence of fluid around an implant. If you have unilateral swelling of a breast implant with a textured breast implant in place, almost always it's still not ALCL. But obviously it does need to be investigated and not ignored. Again, particularly for patients of our own clinic, if you have questions or concerns, pick up the phone, give us a call, and we'll help you with, with answers to your questions and provide you with a request for an ultrasound if it's indicated.